Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be solving the lead code question number 20, valid parentheses. Okay, so this is a very popular and uh, usually asked question. So over here we have a string S containing just the characters. So you have an open and closed uh, parentheses. Um, then you have the curly brackets and you also have uh, the square ones. Okay, so our goal is to determine if our input is valid. So it is valid if the open brackets must be closed by the same type of brackets. Open brackets must be closed in the correct order. So that's also something very important. And every closed bracket has a corresponding open bracket of the same type. So let's just actually look at a few examples for that. So very basic, this is going to be valid, right? We have an opening rounded bracket and a closing rounded one. Perfect, okay? Uh, now let's just say just for the sake of it, uh, we have a closed and then an opening one. Well, this is not valid because obviously we first, the order matters, right? We first need a close, uh, opening one and then a closing one, right? So that is one condition we have to take care of as well. Uh, now we have another, which is this would also not be valid because they're not of the same type. Even though one is opening, one is closing. And finally, we have one last condition, which is the order, right? So this is actually not valid. Now, if you just look at it, uh, we have the correct, so this has a corresponding closing and so does this, right? Uh, but the problem with this is that the opening curly bracket is inside of the opening of this uh, rounded bracket. And what that really tells us is that this bracket, the curly bracket, must be closed before you can actually close the outer bracket, which is the rounded bracket, right? So this hierarchy or order has to be maintained, okay? So just kind of looking at this, let's try to come up with a solution, okay? So let's just first think of a very basic one. So let's say I have a close or an open bracket, sorry. That means I further would need a closed bracket, okay? Cool, uh, now I have an open rounded, uh, sorry, curly bracket. Uh, that means I would need a closed rounded, uh, sorry, curly bracket later on. So I have these conditions. Uh, now I go over here. I have a closed uh, rounded bracket. So that condition is satisfied. And so is the closed uh, curly bracket. But that is not valid, right? Because this parentheses is not valid. So let's actually add another step to it. Now, while I'm adding these, let's try to establish some sort of hierarchy. And essentially, what I'm gonna do is whatever is highest up top, okay? So this is highest up top, right? Essentially what I'm saying is, this has to be satisfied first before I satisfy this. In other words, uh, since I first got the uh, rounded bracket and then the curly bracket, I first must have a closing curly bracket and only then I should have the rounded one, okay? So we can try to keep track of that hierarchy, okay? So now let's do that again. So right now I'm over here and I have a closed rounded bracket. But instead, I'm actually looking for a closed curly bracket. So in this case, it would not be valid. Uh, now let's just do the same thing, but let's let's make it valid, right? So something like this. So in this case, uh, I would add these two elements, and now I'm going to be over here. Now in this case, I have the closed curly bracket, and that is what is up top. So that satisfies the condition, and only after that, I can close the rounded bracket, which is over here, right? So let's just actually look at this and one more example. So essentially what I'm describing over here is a very popular data structure called a stack, okay? And the way a stack works, uh, since it is an easy question, I'll just explain it very simply, is you add elements to this, okay? So let's say I add the element A and then B and then C, and essentially you can think of it as a bucket, okay? And you can only pull out stuff from the top. There's only one opening to it. So now if I want to add something and remove something, it goes from the same place, okay? So now let's say if I add D, D would go on top of C. Now, if I want to remove an element, I'm going to remove whatever is up top. So I'm going to remove the D, okay? Uh, then C and then B and then A and so on and so forth, okay? So we're going to use the same property to actually solve our question. So let's just say we have an example like this, okay? Now this is a valid parentheses, and let's just see how it's gonna work out with a stack. So I'm gonna draw my stack over here, and the first thing that I get is a opening bracket. Now, 
anytime I get a opening bracket, what I can do is I'm going to append the opening bracket inside of this, okay? So every open bracket gets added to the stack, okay? So I'm adding it over here. And really what I'm doing is I'm keeping track of all the opening brackets. So I have some sort of hierarchy established. And when I come, when I see any sort of closing brackets, I could just compare it with whatever the top opening bracket is, okay? So now I have one more. So let's add that to the stack as well. And now I have one more. So all of them are added to the stack. So over here, I actually have a closing bracket. So whenever I get a closing bracket, what I have to do is I have to look at what is on the top of the stack. So at the top of a stack, I have the correct type, right? So the current type and whatever is on top of the stack is the same. So that means that that condition has been satisfied. So whatever opening bracket, uh, square bracket we had, its corresponding close bracket has been found. So in that case, we remove this element, or in other words, we pop it off, right? And we, the reason we're doing that is because they are of the same type. So a square bracket, opening bracket, corresponds to the square closing bracket, and it satisfies the hierarchy. Cool. Okay, so that is gone. Now we go over here. So we have a closing bracket again. Again. So now we do the same thing. We check the top element, which is a opening curly bracket, and then we pop it off, right? And we compare it with what we're currently on. Since they both are of the same type, that means that we have found the correct pair in the correct hierarchy, right? So now this is gonna go as well, okay, cool. And now at the ending over here, um, so same thing, this pops out, same type, and at the ending of this, our stack is empty, okay? So only when our stack is empty, that means that each opening pair has found its corresponding closing pair. So let's just say for the sake of it, at the ending, I have one more opening bracket like this. So this will get added over here. So while all of these were va valid, this is not valid as a whole because this one doesn't have its closing parentheses. So in this case, what would actually happen is since the stack is not empty, it is not going to be valid, okay? So at the ending of our iteration, the stack has to be empty. And finally, I'm just gonna show you one last edge case, which is let's say we have something like this. Everything is a closing bracket. So in that case, uh, what, we would, what we would try to do in the beginning is we would try to pop an element out. But if the stack is empty, we have nothing to pop out. In other words, there have been no opening parentheses. So in that case, we're not going to, we're just gonna return false because it is not a valid set of, uh, sorry, parentheses. So let's just see what this looks like in code. All right, so we're gonna start off by initializing our stack. Uh, I'm just gonna be using a list for that, okay? So we're gonna first iterate through all of the uh, brackets. So I'll just do for bracket in S. Okay, so first we have two conditions, right? If it is a opening bracket or if it is a closing bracket. So let's first check uh, for that. So if bracket in, um, so let's just keep all the opening brackets. So we have this, then we have square, and then we also have the curly ones, okay? So if it is an opening bracket, what do we do? Well, in that case, we're just gonna append it to the stack, okay? So st stack.append, and we're just gonna append the bracket. Cool. Now, if this is not the case, well, it's obviously a closing bracket. Now, in this case, what we have to do is we gotta pop out or take the top value, okay? So I'll just call it popped, and the way you just get the top value is just gonna be stack.pop, okay? So one small thing is if our stack is empty, right, like I showed you when you just have the closing parentheses, then in that case, that means we don't have valid parentheses. So that's something we should uh, check for. So if stack is, the length of stack is zero, then in that case, we can just directly return false. And the reason we're doing this up top is because if the length is zero, uh, this would actually give us an error because there is nothing to pop. Cool, so now we have our final condition, okay? So what we're checking for is the current bracket that we're on, okay? So let's say that is a, a closing rounded bracket, okay? That also means that the popped value must be of the same type. In other words, the popped value must be a closing rounded bracket as well. So if this condition here is true, then that means we're good to go. 
But if it's not true, right, if it is not of the same type, then in that case, we can just directly return false. And that is what we're going to do. So now the only thing that we have left to do is we got to write the same condition over here, but for the squ uh, square and curly brackets as well. So I'll just copy paste that. So let's say the current bracket is a closing square bracket. Then, and the, uh, the popped value is not a opening square bracket. Then that means that they are not of the same type. And in that case, we return false. So same thing again, uh, but this time for the closed curly bracket and curly over here as well, right? So since there's only three of them, I just wrote all of them in the same if, if condition. So this is going to keep going. And let's say now we reach the ending. We've gone through all the brackets. Now in this case, we could just return true. Not really, because let's say we had more opening than closing, like I showed you in one of the examples, then the stack is still not empty. So essentially, we got to check if the stack is empty. So in other words, we can just directly do this condition. So we just return the Boolean value of if the length of stack is zero. So if it is empty, well, it's going to be true. And if it's not empty, it's going to be false, which is what we're expecting. Uh, so let's submit this. Okay, yeah. Submit. And as you can see, our submission was accepted. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. And do let me know if you have any questions.